Rightio. So uh, we're just about to try and optimize the valve timing because on a trident, because you've got two camshafts, so you can change them independently, you can optimize the valve timing. And there, and that's why there are three keyways in these um, camshaft pinions, so you can actually move them around to a different keyway. And the thing is, um, I think the uh, the timing moves by a third of a tooth each keyway you move around. And by doing that, that changes the valve timing. So if it only had one camshaft, you won't be able to do that. So like a Norton Commando has one camshaft, so you can't do that because you, you both the inlet and the exhaust cams are on the same cam shaft. Right, okay. So uh, the first thing I need to do is to set the um, to establish exactly where top dead center is. Uh, and I think I should actually be using the drive side piston, but I've only probably because it's easier to turn the engine over. But anyway, I'm using the timing side. And I've, what I've done is I've put the piston <clears throat> to almost top dead center on the compression stroke. And I've put, uh, I've put this dial gauge in and it's touching, I've got it touching the, the crown of the piston just before top dead center. And I've put this degree disc on the crankshaft. And because I've got the um, gearbox outer cover on, it's, I've lined up top uh, with the very edge of the gearbox cover. So that's my sort of mark. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to turn the engine forward so that the uh, dial gauge is going to go up as the piston goes up and then it's going to go back down again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the piston forwards until that needle is going to go up and then when it gets back down to zero, then I'll have known it's travelled exactly the same distance up and down. So it's got, it started at position sort of zero, gone up to the top and come down the other side to position zero. Okay, and from that, using the degree uh, wheel, we should be able to uh, work out exactly where top dead center is. So uh, I'll just check I've got that absolutely on zero and I've got my And that I've got it set, and I've set that exactly on the edge there. So we'll watch this, and I'm now going to turn the engine forwards. The piston's going up to top dead center, and it's going to like hover a bit because that's what happens, and that's why we've got this on here. And then it's going to go back down the other side, and I'm going to move it and try and get it so it goes on exactly back to zero. There we go. Now I look at the degree wheel and I see how many degrees it's moved. And I can see from this it's moved exactly 20 degrees. So I now know that if I put it, uh, that uh, if I move it back 10 degrees, that's exactly top dead center. Yeah? Because the whole thing's moved 20 degrees from near the top and back down. So 10 degrees up, 10 degrees back down. So top dead center must be exactly 10 degrees. And we do need to know exact top dead center if we're going to sort the timing out. Because obviously if we get that wrong, then the timing is going to be wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen the degree wheel. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll move it back. I'm going to move it back to 10 degrees. I know that's top dead center. There we go. That's bang on 10 degrees. I'm going to loosen it again now. And I'm going to move the degree disc so that it's pointing zero there and tying it off. So I now know that that, when that marker is in line with just with the edge of the gearbox casing, that's exactly top dead center. Okay, so that's the first thing we do before we do anything else. And uh, having done that, we can now start measuring how much the valves move. Um, 
so uh, and that will that will tell us whether we need to adjust the timing or not to to make it uh, more effective